In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at one of the important features of shamanic practice, and that is the capacity to enter into non-ordinary states of awareness. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at the way that shamans and shamanic practitioners work with the altered or non-ordinary states of awareness in order to access the unseen powers of nature that are a very important part of their practice. And indeed, establishing relationship with the unseen powers that are held in these non-ordinary states of awareness or which are accessed through these non-ordinary states of awareness is fundamental to shamanic practice. Uh, shamanic practitioners cannot practice without establishing relationships with these unseen powers. And it is actually these unseen powers that do the, the work that shamanic practitioners are asked to do in their communities. And of course, as you may already know, shamans are the doctors, the mediators, the ceremonialists, the priests, the psychopomps, and the teachers of the communities in which they reside. And of course, shamanism as a practice is a practice that is focused on understanding the wisdom of the earth. And it is through the interface with the forms of nature of the unseen powers of nature that shamans establish their work and accomplish their aims. And um, shamanism takes many forms depending on the cultural setting in which it is found. Perhaps the most familiar way of accessing this numinous world is that of dreaming. Another access point is the spontaneous visionary experience. Additionally, shamans work with psychotropic plants that alter their state of awareness and provide them with a connection to helping spirits. They also use the shamanic journey and the vehicle of mediumship to connect with these fields of compassionate intelligence that take the form of nature and that enliven their practice. Let's enter into each of these doorways ourselves so that we can understand them better. And dreaming, as I mentioned, is one of the most familiar ways of understanding the world beyond the conscious mind <clears throat> that shamans work in and um, bring information from to assist their communities. And in almost all shamanic traditions, dreams are considered to be important sources of information. This information can provide guidance and healing, and dreams can provide a meeting place where helping spirits can interact with the shamanic practitioner. Other spirits can also make themselves known to the dreamer, and often a shaman or a medicine person is recognized by their capacity to dream and to receive visions through the dream time. As with all things shamanic, the usual boundaries between the unseen and the seen seem to dissolve with dreaming. One of the ways the boundary between waking life and dreaming life is weakened is through the process of lucid dreaming. In lucid dreaming, dreamers train themselves to wake up in the dream. And this is often by setting a cue in the dream so that when they experience that cue, they will wake up and they will become aware of what's happening. In some shamanic traditions, the initiate is required to develop this skill, and certain tasks must be undertaken within a series of dreams to develop greater facility in lucid dreaming. As the dreamer becomes more able to recall information coming from dreams, the dream world becomes more alive. This aliveness is very akin to the experiences of the inner cosmography of the shamanic journey, where the journeyer more explicitly seeks connection with the guidance that is present, ever present in non-ordinary reality. And we're going to be exploring the working with the shamanic journey later in this series. According to Weechul and Nepali shamans I have spoken to about these experiences, the interplay between the dream world and ordinary reality is not unusual. 
They have told me that these kinds of experiences which skirt the edges of what we call synchronicity or coincidence, but which extend so much more deeply into the fabric of reality, are natural and normal. Experiences that seem a bit outside of possibility can happen in dreams. One of these experiences is telepathy. Telepathy is an experience where information is transferred from one person to another without the use of the spoken word. Because dreams function as doors between worlds, telepathy in dreams can be quite common. I'd like to give you an experience of one of my clients uh, who, and one of my students who um, had telepathic dreams very, very frequently. And this process of receiving information in, in her dreams actually started when she was a young woman and um, she was um, waiting for her fiancé to return <clears throat> from um, World War II. She was an older woman when I was working with her several, well, many years ago. And um, she, she woke up uh, from a dream and she felt she had to get a message to her fiancé. She was desperate to get a message. And um, she had had a dream where she saw him um, in an attic of a house and she saw him die there. And so she thought, if I can just tell him, avoid addicts, then he'll be okay. But as she was, um, she was, she was trying to get a telegram to him um, and as she was at the telegraph office, she received the message that he had actually been killed in an attic uh, the day before, um, there were, probably when she was dreaming. Um, and um, the, the, the house had been bombed and he had been one of the people, one of the snipers up in the, in the attic. And so that was a pretty traumatic experience for her. And um, she had, you know, turned away from her gifts um, for some time. And then she started receiving information again. And it turns out that, you know, she's, you know, a very, very, what we would call psychic person. And um, again, if she were living in a, in a, in a shamanic culture, she would be recognized as, as a shaman because of her capacity to receive these messages um, in a telepathic way and dreaming. And um, I have another student who uh, also had to come to terms with her gifts uh, in the dream time. Um, her, she had dreams where she would dream of the future. And uh, she really didn't like, like my first student, she didn't like having um, these dreams. You know, that wasn't something that she looked forward to. She didn't, in fact, she came to me first um, because she had so much trouble sleeping because she didn't want to go to sleep because she always had these prophetic dreams. And her, her mind, she always thought that she was creating what was happening uh, in the dreams. Like she thought because she had dreamt it, that was why it had happened. And we spent some time, you know, understanding better, <laughs> helping her understand better the nature of, uh, of, these, of these visions and the way that these visions had come to shamanic practitioners for, from a, forever. <laughs> and that, you know, that this is, again, if she were in a shamanic culture, she would have been recognized as a strong dreamer and therefore as someone who might be taken in to the initiations of the shamanic path. Um, but um, she told me about one dream where <clears throat> she had um, a dream all about Christmas. Uh, it was in June, um, and she had this long dream about Christmas and all the things that were going to happen and, you know, what the tree was going to look like and who was going to be there and the presents that everyone would receive. And she said, you know, the, the funny thing is my father wasn't there. And... Uh, and so she was very, very disturbed because she, she was afraid that she was having a, another prophetic dream. And um, as it turns out, her father had a heart attack in early November that year, and he was not at Christmas. He died. And um, 
And it was really, really hard for her to live with this and to know this before it happened. But she got to the place <clears throat> where she could just, uh, as, as, as the Nepali shaman told me, understand that what looks like synchronicity or it looks like coincidence is actually part of the shamanic path. It's part of this interface between ordinary and non-ordinary reality. And um, I think that it's, it's important for those of us living in the modern time to begin to consider how important dreams are to shamanic practitioners and, and, and have been for part of shamanic practice for forever, <laughs> as long as shamanism has been practiced, which is, of course, uh, tens of thousands of years across the planet in different cultures and different times and places. And so um, I just wanted to offer you these thoughts about dreaming and offer you an inspiration perhaps to begin to watch your dreams more closely and um, to begin to understand that your dreams may be not only giving you important information, but showing you about skills that you may have, perhaps in an undeveloped way, that you can develop through shamanic practice. So I hope this was helpful. And uh, we're going to continue with our exploration of the altered state of awareness and shamanic practice in our next video, where we'll be looking at visionary experience.